Where are we headed, Jamie? Uh, Dan Lucas. Gonna go visit with Dan and uh, Melissa. Check in on them, see how their crops grow. See if Mr. Hugh can provide us any direction there to help Dan finish out this crop. We were out last week and he's got a great start to it. I mean, he's got a beautiful stand, corn's all nice and uniform, but just want to make sure there's something, if there's anything else we can do to help it finish on out, that we help try to get him that direction. Yeah, well, it's real clear from his uh, leaf tests that his potassium is high, his magnesium is low in the leaf, both corn and soybeans, even like it's pretty pronounced in the soybeans. But uh, it's real common for potassium fertilizers oh, yeah. to inhibit the magnesium uptake of the plant. And it's really stacking their nodes tight together. And he had just beautiful, I mean, look at the size of some of them leaves. Yeah, yeah, and, and there's hardly any insect damage or anything else like that out in here. True. Yeah, there ain't hardly a mark on those leaves. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, where are we at here? Looks like two, three. Here's four, our silica five. test, see? So And I'm really that. rubbing it and it still holds together pretty well. So So how do you do the silica test? You you take your fingers, mm -hmm. like the first two fingers, and your thumb and you do like that to where it would squeak. Mine are a little wet, so they're not squeaking. But uh, that's that test, see, because silica is what makes the cell walls and connective tissues. So if you can crush the cell walls and break the, connect the connective tissues, then you're silica deficient. Whereas... What does it look like when it's silica deficient, since these aren't? Well, one of the things that we've been seeing going down the highway is how pale the soybeans are in their early development in most fields. Mm -hmm. And because silica is responsible for transport of such things as magnesium, which is what makes the soybeans so dark a green, then the soybeans in those pale fields are pretty obviously not picking up enough magnesium to make a dark chlorophyll leaf. So what if someone's doing that silica test, rubbing the leaf between their fingers, what will they see? Well, if it rolls up like wet toilet paper, then they're silica deficient. Mm -hmm. And well, Are there any other signs you can tell from like visually inspecting the leaf close up if there's adequate silica in the leaf? Well, we see, for instance, in this leaf, that there was some insect damage in the very early development of the leaf. See that? That was insect damage. Some insect had a nibble on it. Mm -hmm. But that's the only one we see in, in several feet of row. Mm -hmm. uh, so, obviously there's not much insect damage. Now an insect is going to come into the field and land and take a nip at something and if he likes it, he's going to stick around and eat like hell. But if he only takes a nip like that, that was in the very early, like back in this stage of the leaf, see? Mm -hmm. And he had a little bite of it, and he, he flew away again. Mm -hmm. So that's telling me that this was a little bit indigestible. Yeah. And it's that strength of the cell walls and connective tissues that makes the insects sort of have a hard time chewing it. But further down the track, because silica is also dependent for the, uh, the efficiency of photosynthesis, 
and the efficiency of photosynthesis means does the plant have a lot of energy is it high bricks is it uh, you know able to take its chemistry another step further and develop more fully its potential and these obviously have well when that happens then you not only get more sugar but you get more long chain proteins and it's the long chain proteins that give the insect a bellyache so if they he had a little nip says oh i got to feel i feel like i've got you know indigestion yeah, there's muscle. and so he's not going to stick around and eat that He's going to fly away and find one of those fields where the soybeans are pale because they don't have enough silica. Do you see more little little hairs on the on the leaf as well? That's those, another um, thing to look for. Yeah, see how how a soybean leaf and it's usually hairier on the bottom than on the top. But you can see, especially if you catch the sunlight right, you can see there's a lot of fine hairs on a soybean and you see them especially on the edge and those hairs are related to the zinc in the plant's chemistry and the zinc particularly works on the edge of the leaf and so that zinc is another element that's kind of heavy that the plant has to pick up and the silica is allowing this plant to pick up more of the zinc from the soil so all those things are considerations. You look at the field as a whole and you see the color of the soybeans and it's not that much more pale than the corn. The corn, which has got nitrogen fertilizer under it, and that's turning it darker green. But the soybean doesn't have that nitrogen fertilizer under it and it's taking its time. See how much darker the older leaves are on the plant? they've collected more magnesium, made more chlorophyll. But this, this soybean is actually doing better than most of the fields we're seeing at this time of year. Now you look over in the area where the soil biology has been impaired by compaction and too much fertilizer in the turning spots then you can kind of see what we're seeing in some of those other fields where the plants aren't picking up their nutrients well enough. So those are, those are all kind of like just field observations. It's not a lab test or anything like that, but nature's an open book and, and it shows you what's going on if you have the understanding that it takes to read it.